swear I wish I got a QM1 size 12 on now. <laughs> well, I've had it on seven minutes now. Yeah, I'm starting to drop off. Feels very heavy and slow. Goodness me, this is humongous. What a fish to finish on. Goodness me, look at the size of that. Right, good morning fish people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV and as you've probably already guessed, I'm back at Lindome Lakes again on the Loco Pond. And again, it was minus four this morning when I woke up. So I wasn't right sure whether we'd be able to fish or not, but again, half the lake has got uh, ice on it, half the lake is clear. Now I'm in an area at the minute, I'm on peg seven. I don't hear too many people shouting about peg seven. Don't think it's a particular favored area, but all the other pegs are taken. So I have no choice but to really fish this one. I mean, there are still pegs to my right. I've got plenty of room. Um, I'll let you have a quick look at the lake. It's Sunday, the 31st of January. The crazy fisherman is back out fishing in minus God knows what it is. I think it's actually warmed up a little bit. It feels like it's probably only about zero. <laughs> right, let's have a look at peg seven. Here we go. So peg seven, I've got all this area free. But as you can see, there are anglers all across there, all the way down and the ice, see if I can get it. The ice is all along here. Uh, down here and it goes back a bit and obviously the favoured pegs there there the favoured pegs that's where we were fishing the other week with David we'll see if I can get it we were over there in the middle somewhere somewhere over there so peg seven I'm pretty much what I've decided to do today I've decided pellet only and probably a few and probably wafters as well on the uh, Juro banjo feeder. So as you can see there, fishery pellets. I've put a little bit of turmeric in this to make it yellow. They're your normal fishery pellets. I've got a few 8 mil pellets. I'll tell you what they're for shortly. Some softened down pellets and some soft pellets. Oh, and wafters. I forgot about those. Different kinds of wafters and a, a bit of squidgy redo. Right. Tactics. What's my plan? As you probably guessed, I'm going to try and just catch on pellet only. You're probably wondering, hard 8 mil pellets, what are they for? Well, I'm going to try, can't promise because you know what fishing's like, I'm just stepping over my landing net there, you know what fishing's like, I might not even get a bite today. I'm going to try and catch shallow on the pellet waggler. And when I say shallow, I don't mean like we would in the summer, anything from sort of 6 inch to 3 foot on the pellet waggler. This is probably from four foot to seven or eight foot. Uh, a suspended bait, I won't be in and out all the time, but just one or two pellets around it and just see if we can get a bite. I'm not making any promises, but it, it has proved quite successful. I've done it at Psych House, I've done it at uh, Oakland Waters and I've done it at Hayfield Lakes. In fact, I think Franny won one of our matches doing that when it was like two degrees. So it's a little test just to see if we can actually catch on 8 mil hard pellet shallow. It's really shallow, it's mid, mid, mid to three quarters I would say, because I know this lake can get up to about 12 or 14 foot I think. I'm not exactly sure, I know it's quite deep in areas. So I'll show you my rigs. Here we go. This is one of the Maver 6 gram uh, waggler floats. It's quite thick on the end there, so it will suspend, you know, uh, it will take an 8 mil pellet. Oh, nearly had a heart attack. That's to scare the dicky birds. <laughs> so it's quite a long float. With it, with me casting and leaving it suspended, a long float generally stays in the same spot a little bit longer. Oh, 016 main line down here. Again, heart attack job. Down here to an 015 fluorocarbon 16kkmb tied by myself and a band as you can see there. So that is for the waggler um, and it's on a MIDI X Flex 4G 11 foot 
bagging pellet waggler. Right, this one. Um, this rod is a 12 foot parabolics SUV feeder. It's a, quite a new one. And I've got that coupled up with a, uh, I've got 020 main line, uh, sorry, 018 main line. And I've got a Juro Panjo feed. It's a 30 gram, four inch up length, banded with a 16 MWG Guru. And that is the 520 extremity. I've also got a bomb rod set up. I know a few people have been asking about this one. It's the Matrix Horizon Carp Feeder Rod. Very soft rod, lovely and light. I love it. It's I just love the rod to be, just love it to bits. Uh, that's coupled up with a um, Preston Centris NT420. And I've got 016 mainline on there, but I do have, I think I've told you before, I do have a shock leader on, not so much for the casting, but it's it's pretty much so. As you can see, I'm gonna attach my bomb there. Oops. There are two number eights under there. Twizzle boom. Hook link swivel there. And then I've got 015, um, hook length at the bottom with a 16 kkmb air rigged now the reason turn around the reason that i put the um the shock leader on is because when you do the twizzle boom it's a lot stiffer and it's pretty much anti-tangle very rare i get a tangle on that you don't get me wrong it's not 100 nothing's 100 percent because it depends where it catches and how you reel it in but it's pretty much tangle proof and I'm going to have the soft pellets, a short line like I did before, um, a sort of 18, 16 to 18 metres as a bomb line. I can also cast that um, onto my pellet waglet line where there'll be pellets there as well, which I'm going to be fishing at around about 20 plus metres, 20 odd metres, 25 metres. So that's the plan. Pellet day. Let's see if we can put it into action and just keep us fingers crossed we get a few fish. <laughs> right, I've had one cast, 25 minute cast. No signs, no liners, no nothing. Um, that's on the Juro Banjo feeder. I've just gone out another three or four yards towards the edge of the ice. The ice, I know you might not be able to see, it just juts out a little bit, but I've gone right to the edge of that, a little bit further out towards the middle of the lake. Um, that's just been in a minute and a half. But in the meantime, and because I'm on the Juro Banjo fit, there's not a lot of bait in there, so you can do a little bit of searching about, which is what I did last time I was here. So I've just gone a little bit further. I'm hoping that ice is going to recede back a little bit, but I'm not holding my breath because it is rather cold. But in the meantime, out there, two or three pellets, every sort of five or six minutes or so, just eight mil pellets, just to create a little bit of noise. I'm not holding my breath. I've not seen anybody catch anything yet. Um, that is going to be where my pellet waggler line is. And the ice to my left here, I've got some softened down fishery pellets, six mil pellets. And I'm just putting three or four there, sort of every 10 minutes. All right, rudely interrupted. Can't make my mind up whether it's the camera, the batteries, or the SD card that just doesn't like this cold weather. Pretty much like us, a bit soft. <laughs> um, yeah, so firing a few soft pellets out there, so sort of every 10, 10 minutes or so. That's going to be the short bomb line. That's at about 15, 16 metres, I would have said. And just keep, like I said, just keep topping up making a little bit of noise with the 8mm pellets to see if we can catch off the bottom on the pellet waggler. Like I said, I've not seen anybody catching a fish just yet. It seems pretty quiet, pretty difficult. But you never know with fishing, it might just turn up, might just start catching. Right, we'll try again because that's a new battery. <laughs> it has been very, very cold. So it looks like I am going to have to cover my camera up and just protect it a little bit from the cold. Put, put a little sock over it or something. Um, it, I were having these problems last week. 
Um, so I can't make my mind up with this SD card's batteries or the camera. But it's struggling to uh, record in such cold conditions. So we'll give you updates as we go along. Pellet only, apart from on the uh, Jodo Banjo, which I'm putting wafters on. Got a couple of different choices there. I've now been out nine minutes, not had a liner or an indication or anything. Um, I'm due to put a couple more pellets out there. Let's see if we can uh, trick some fish into taking a bait. An eight mil bait, hard pellet. Be interesting that, won't it? And it's not, like Alex said, he said he's not sold very, very many eight mil pellets. It's not the norm, it's all soft pellet this time of year. Which is what I've got. I've got some softened pellets and some expanders for the for the bomb, which I do like using soft pellets. And Alex was telling me this is the great pole pegs. These I know there's quite a few skimmers here, but as you all know, I'm trying to keep in touch with fish on the bottom for the feeder fishing. Hopefully, when we get back match fishing, I have got quite a few uh, feeder matches to fish. I've just managed to get two tickets for the feeder king, which I am absolutely highly delighted with it because that's very very difficult to try and get those tickets you've got to be like lightning on your phone fast fingers <laughs> right let's see how we get on let's hope we catch one or two fish right then there's been absolutely zero to report <laughs> i had nothing on the long judo banjo feeder half hour casts i've seen one fish caught to my right and I think, I'm not sure if there's been one or two caught to my left on pole. All three people have caught on pole. But the, all this ice now is starting to move that way. Uh, it's starting to break up. It was clear about ooh, five minutes ago, smack in front of me. Uh, but the ice is now starting to move that way. There's going to be a big sheet of ice right in front of me now and with the speed that it's moving, looking at it, I don't know, 15 minutes, it might just disappear. Um, I've got a bombing, it's actually, it was clear water but now it's it's under the ice. I've tried on where I've been feeding soft pellets, I've not had a touch. I've had the waggler out there, kept feeding every sort of four or five minutes two or three pellets as you saw earlier I've not had a touch on that and I've been going down from sort of four and a half foot right down to about seven foot and I've not had any indications whatsoever on anything I've not had a liner nothing but with this I mean there's there's not long left I'll only be staying another hour or so I'm hoping that all this ice is going to move right out of my way um, and I may be able to get smack into the middle of the lake then. That's what I'm hoping for. I mean, these guys to my left now will be over at Moon because they've got no ice in front of them whatsoever. Um, this is really sh it's shifting quite a bit. I think you can see now how much it's moved. Um, so once all this has moved out of my way, I'm going to go straight into the middle of the lake and see if we can uh, locate any fish from there, but it's fished really, really tough. Which at this time of year it can do, you know. No point getting upset about it, at least we're out on the bank. Um, in fact, I reckon another, maybe even five minutes, this might be right out of my way. So I'll be able to get right into the middle of the lake. Juro banjo feeder, little wafter. Let's see if we can locate some fish there. I'm clipped up at about 40 meters at the minute I'll move quite a little bit more further out than that and just see uh, see if we can locate any fish it's been uh, <laughs> been twiddling my thumbs I've been putting the bait in just the right amounts I think I'm trying to tr get some you know the plopping noise of the pellets and I really did I mean can you see it now how much it's moved it's really moved across hasn't it I really did think I'd get one or two because I've not fed a lot of bait. Probably more bait where the waggler line is with every, you know, two or three pellets. Uh, every sort of four or five minutes. But uh, I, I did expect to maybe even get something on the uh, on the waggler. 
it can work really well at this time of year you've got to be a bit patient you're not in and out every two minutes you're leaving it in five to ten minutes if you can keep your float still the winds just started blowing left to right so it did start moving quite a bit which is not ideal but when it was calm it was perfect um, and while I've been talking to you this is going to be gone in a few minutes so that is my next plan of attack Joro banjo feeder straight out in front of me start off at where I've clipped up at the minute and work my way out towards the middle towards the island a little bit let's see let's keep his fingers crossed let's see if we can get one or two right folks it's taken a hell of a long time to get a bite well no to be fair I had one 15 minutes ago I had a little skimmer this has just gone round and I'm hoping it, it may be a decent F1 or maybe a car we just don't know yet but we shall see let's just hope it don't get wrapped round all them reeds there it's trying to go into those reeds ah typical typical Come on, come away. Come away for Alan. Uh, there we go. And I've gone out, I've gone out like an extra 20 metres or so. I've been putting five metres on at a time. And at last, it's gone round, but it's, it's, uh, oh, it's going a bit now. It's taken some coming, I'll tell you. It really has been a day of patience today. Oh, it might be a cart, this one. It's certainly pulling in a bit harder than an F1. That's winter fishing for you, though. You can go all day with nothing, and then, as you can see, the sun's getting lower. Almost ready for home. I think there's a couple more casts left yet. <laughs> there's been nothing in this area around here at all. I've had no liners, no nothing. And I did have a liner just before this bike came. Ah, it's putting a mighty battle up. Mighty for this time of year, they normally just come straight in. Bring us chocolate yellow. Oh, it is an F1. Oh, that's a mighty F1, is that? Oh, that'll do nicely. Well done, Nosha. Oh, I thought it was going to be semi skimmed, but. In the end, I was pretty mighty. Well, that's not as uh, big an F1 as I thought. That's put a right battle up. But you can tell that these fish are not moving about a lot at all. Because there are... Oh, just two secs. Let me get it off. The leech is all over it. Soaks. Let's get him out. I thought it wouldn't be bigger than that. There we go. At last, a fish. The leeches. Let's see if we can get you one. The leeches all over its fins. There you can see them at the bottom there. Look. They're everywhere. All those leeches. That's because they stay still a lot longer than normally would. But a fish at last. Minus four this morning, and we've still managed to get one. Thank goodness. <laughs> right, a couple more casts. We'll see if we can get into a big monster now. I 
get my rod low there because of the uh, left to right wind so I tried to keep it as low as I could for the distance I was casting and not have as much of a bow on my line because if you get too much of a bow you can feed the kicks to the right so there was a bit still a, a little bit of uh, a bow but not as bad as it could have been if I'd have launched it quite high so <coughs> just a little tip for you there and it went down okay let's see if it oh I've just missed it dropped back did the uh, did, did the rod so it could have either been a liner or it was a bite but it dropped back and struck into it and there was nothing there and that that was after like two and a half minutes right let's see if we can get another one that would have been nice if I could have hooked into one straight away wouldn't it right let's see we let's see the tip goes round all right then folks 13 minutes in after I missed the drop back bite it's gone round again only a tiny little bite I think it would have dropped back bite as well wasn't it Alex it dropped back didn't it yeah <laughs> I was just telling Alex I was, mo I was moaning because it hadn't gone round again and then I moaned this one on as he spur it again Juro banjo feed a little yellow chocolate orange uh, chocolate yellow Oh, is it in a snag? Yeah. It's just popped out. I think it's another F1. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Oh, the feed has just popped out. A little F1 about a pound or so, pound and a bit. I'll oh, get my gloves off, you can have a little look at him. Baby one for here. Babies. Baby fishes. Let's get these off because I don't want my hands getting wet through. There, smallest F1 in the loco pond. There we go. Another little F1. Little drop back bite it was. After I'd just been moaning about it not going round. <laughs> That's the best way, moan your fish on. Right, one more cast I think. I think we'll call it a day because it is getting rather chilly. But at least we've caught one or two in the end. Not as many as uh, the last time we visited the local pond and it's been the same tactic. It's been Juro, Banjo, Micros and a little wafter. That's the way forward at the minute but uh, having a quick chat with Alex, they have been catching one or two over there. Apparently they've caught quite a few F1s on that side, that, that area, the other side where me and David were the other week. That seems to be where they all showed up at the minute, so let's get back in one more cast. Let's see if we can get a monster this time round. Well, 15 minutes in. And the, uh, another drop back bite, that's, that's what they've all, well, not, oh, the first one was round. I had three drop back bites. And it uh, looks like another F1. Oh, nobody likes to see that, do they? <laughs> you can't write it, can you? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right. Damn it. This is not an F1. It was in for one and a half minutes. And I've had it on for about four minutes. And it's taken some right line. This is a carp. I 
I've been mentioning monsters. Look, I mean, it's tech in line again. I got it. What? Get behind me. This is a good fish. Oh my goodness, it's taking some line. Boy, oh boy. This may, may be one of the loco monsters, either that or foul looks, but it feels, feels like I've got it right. That this ain't no slouch, this ain't a pound and a half. This is what we've been waiting for. Let's just hope the hook doesn't pull out like the last one. Right, I'll just do a bit more playing. Get back to you in a sec. It's going to take a while to get in this. This is where I wish I got a QM1 size 12 on now. <laughs> it's a 16 MWG size 16. Well, I've had it on seven minutes now. It's slowly coming in, but I do know there's a snag down there and have these reeds to my left. I've got to start lifting it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm starting to drop off. This has put a right scrap up for this time of year, so... Oh, it's taking some line again, so I'm assuming it's a double figure. Come on, Nosh! it in that snag that the F1 was in so I'm just trying to lift it up over it oh dear dear eh? the ticking just reminds me of that film Jaws Come on, be good to these lovely fisher people. Let's let's show them what a mighty fish you are. You just feel it going around its fins. It just keeps popping off. It feels like you've lost it sometimes. It's when they're turning. I'd normally keep it lower than this, but like I said, I don't want it in that snag. Away it's gone, it's off again. snag area just there where it is got to try and get it up from there that's exactly where it was a snag You watch it be about three pound. Don't think it is though. Feels very heavy and slow. Get out of there. We don't want you in there. Q1 
keep seeing the swirls, but I'm not seeing it yet. Oh yes, that's a big one. That's a double figure. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Oh, what a fish to end on. I still haven't got it in yet. That is a mighty fish. Oh my goodness me. That is a monster. Goodness me. Good grief, that's got to be. Oh, I don't know what it's got to be. 20 pound, is it? Oh, some rubbish in me, bloody. Goodness me, this is humongous. What a fish to finish on. Goodness me, look at the size of that. Well, that's made the weight well worth while. It has got to be. Oh. I mean, look at, look at the size of that. Absolute monster. Well, it's got to be £20 plus. It's an absolute monster. Just look at that. Beautiful. You can't complain at that. That's, I mean, I have got some scares, but I've no net to put it in. But look, just look at that. What a fish to finish, finish on. <laughs> that has made my day. Brilliant. I, I just wish I'd got a keep net to weigh him. But he has got to be 20 pound. Got to be. What an absolute treat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Juro Banjo, little chocolate yellow, and you can end up with a fish like that. He is massive. That's a 20 inch net, and he's dwarfing it. Beautiful. Right, we shall get him back. What a monster! Thank you very much, Mr. Fish. A monster to finish with. <laughs> That's made me day. Well worth the wait. Right. Brilliant. Boom, boom, let me say, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> well, what a day that was, eh? Minus four when I got up. Wife thought I were crackers. I thought I were crackers. And it was frost everywhere. I think there's some pictures of uh, some of the floods that we've had. I think I've got a little bit of footage of a flood. All the ice everywhere. But it did warm up. It got to at least... Um, ooh, it might have actually got to one degree, something like that. Maybe even a mighty two. Two degrees. So, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. You saw my plan. I'd got the waggler rod set up. That has worked in... It's been working this year, actually. Or should I say last year, before into lockdown. At Hayfield Lakes, we have been catching sort of from half, mid water to sort of three quarters on a suspended eight mil hard pellet. And people have even been catching on hard pellet as well. But unfortunately, that area where I was, I didn't really fancy it there. All the other pegs that I would have gone to were taken up and the other side of the lake was frozen up where me and David Wood were the week uh, the week before. And the fish do seem to be over that area. I'm talking to Alex, he's your resident professional down there. And he says, yeah, they seem to be from sort of halfway and going towards that side. 
at the minute you know fish do move about when the wind changes direction and temperatures change they will move about where i was is prolifically known for skimmers a few small f1s on pole and your margins but margins not too much at this time of year so the soft soft pellets six mil soft pellets kept firing out we sort of 15 16 meters had a little girl there under the ice to the edge of the ice nothing i never even had a liner i had no liners or anything on the half hour cast that i was having on the juro banjo as far as i could cast up to the ice the edge of the ice um, at about 40 meters absolutely nothing and nothing on the waggler eventually the wind got up a little bit and it was just moving a little bit too much a crosswind ideally on the wind behind in winter when you're using that makes the job hell of a lot easier but three hours or so in i think it was about two o'clock yeah two quarter past two i had not had a bite i'd seen a guy to my right catch one fish on the pole i saw nobody else up to the willow tree catch anything apparently they were catching a few f1s past the willow tree in sort of 36 and 37 i think he said they'd had a few f1s there and the guys well i think it was jamie snedker i think they'd had a few f1s uh, to my left and and, and uh, i think the odd carp but there wasn't a lot happening at all where i was in fact it was i was almost thinking about packing up but then that when that wind got up the ice as you saw it moved so that made my mind up i'm staying till that moves and i'm going to search further out so about 40 meters was my starting point i probably ended up about 60 to 65 meters now in a match you would not be able to do that but all the people with the wind blowing towards the south bank into the south bank they all packed up it was getting too cold for them so why not i cast towards the middle slightly to the right out of the way of the guys on the left if i'd have gone another 20 yards to my left i'd have been pretty close to their swim so it's not something i'd do in a match but with pleasure fishing i knew i had to chase the fish i think i had four i think it was like 40 45 then 55 and then 65 or, or 60 and 65 i had to chase about three or four times then eventually the tip went round and i had a lovely f1 well actually no before that i did a little back bite it was a little skimmer like that then i had the f1 one about three pound then a, another baby f1 and i was saying right let's get him for a monster then i lost one nobody likes to see that and all this is on the juro banjo feeder with micro pellets and a little ringers chocolate yellow on a mwg go to mwg size 16 hook 019 hook length pretty much last cast of the day and I had a lovely little pull round, struck into that. I didn't bother putting the camera on for at least four minutes, because I knew this was a mighty fish. And boy, oh boy, was it. Put a right scrap up. I mean, I know I mentioned it's got to be a double figure on this. I suspected it was one of the heavy lumps in there. Now we landed it i did get it in as you saw i was highly delighted i have my biggest carp is 19 pounds 12. i've had quite a few around the 13 to 15 pound mark but that was a lot bigger a lot bigger it was certainly bigger than the 19 pounds a lot bigger than 13 to 15 but it was bigger than the 19 pound 12 that i got i have got the weigh bucket and scales in my van but it was bloody cold there was nobody near enough to me to sort of say can you just hold this fish in this net while i go and get me stuff there was nobody about to do that if i had to take an educated guess alex has sent me a picture through of the cart that he caught at 23 pounds five looked about the same length but i seem to think mine were a bit it was chunky and see my hands check go rewind it and check my hands on it i had hold of it like that you can just see my fingers even on the tail so it's broad i would say the thickness of it was about eight inches i would say depth that way 10 10 inch something like that 
and lengthwise well that's a 20 inch net and as you saw it was bowed like that so the tail was hanging out i would say that has got to be a two foot carp definitely maybe a little bit more educated guess i'm going to go for 22 and a half i suspect it may have been heavier I, i'm thinking it could have been near 25 but let's say 20 but I think it'd have gone over the £20 mark. It's definitely the biggest carp I've ever caught. I'm not a specimen hunter. I'm a match angler, as you know, and I was highly delighted with the monster. And if anybody else is watching this and you want to recognise it, rewind it, freeze it. It's got four scales round the gill and a couple near its fin. And they actually go all the way around and then three in the middle with a few at the end. It was in mint condition. I think it was six near the tail end and uh, I don't think I've heard of anybody name any carp in there but as my brother reminded me we used to have some goldfish when we were tiddlywinks one was called Fred and one was called Jennifer so we've decided to call it Fred <laughs> so there you go I managed to land Fred 20 pound plus um, absolutely highly delighted it just finished the day off beautifully a little bit of patience needed and proof that you have got to chase fish out in winter don't be frightened about doing it you can end up with something as wonderful as that fish so i hope you've enjoyed today's video i've certainly enjoyed doing it for you i didn't do it for the first three hours but it's been an absolute pleasure and a delight to catch that and show you guys a monster from the loco wonderful so if you enjoy my videos folks don't forget it's absolutely free to subscribe um, click the subscribe button press the notification bell you will get all our videos as we upload them and if you do like them a thumbs up will be very very nice so until next time we shall see you on the bank hopefully at a pond I've not video before West Cowick Brick Pond so we'll see you soon see you soon Sergio <laughs> Tata for now and we'll see you on the bank at West Cowick